So we have a quiz tomorrow, and we're reviewing our transformations, which are translation, rotation, and reflection. Okay? So those are the three transformations we're going to work with, and we're just going to go over the review, make sure you understand how to do all three, all three types of problems. Um, the other thing is making sure we understand, you know, the component form of the vectors plus the descriptive form. So that's pretty fine. Uh, there is something that does happen, unfortunately, with the software and prints out. It doesn't like printing the arrow. It prints this R, like registered trademark type symbol instead. So it's a little bit weird. But wherever you see that, that's supposed to be an arrow. So that's something that we've tried to fix. It's a font substitution issue with the software. Yeah, yeah. So that's supposed to be like the arrow thing. It's just something with the font it substitutes when it sees that arrow it substitutes in that symbol we're not sure why we've tried different things we just learned to live with it um so not the worst thing in the world so anyway the first thing is the translation and you're going to hear me say this over and over and over again the key with transformations is one translation at a time one point at a time don't try to do everything all at once don't try to do the translate the segments Translate the points and then draw the segments in when you're done. That's the key to doing these things. And when you do it, it's fairly simple usually. So here it's very descriptive for the descriptive form, x minus 1, y minus 3. If we were to put that in vector format, it would look like negative 1, negative 3 would be the vector. That wasn't part of your problem, but I want you to see both ways. So if we put it one way or the other. But it's pretty simple. It means the x-coordinate, which, by the way, we give you this little hint by putting the x on the x-axis so you know which one is the x-coordinate. The x-coordinate's going to go down 1, which is left 1, and y-coordinate's down 3, which is uh, down 3. So each point is going to go left 1, down 3. And what I'm going to want to see both on the – what I'm definitely going to want to see in the test is you label every point. You don't just draw the points and draw the figure. You label them well so that I know that this point is D primed. Left one, down three, there's U primed. Left one, down three, there's W primed. And we draw in as neatly as possible. It's not going to be perfect, obviously, but I shouldn't see stuff like a big curve, you know. Try to draw it neatly. If you want to bring a straight edge to help make nice straight lines, that can be helpful. If you want to use the edge of your ID card as a straight line, that's fine. Okay, it works. It makes a really nice straight edge for this sort of thing because it's pretty small and that's usually a long enough segment, so it can really work. Bones away. Thank you. Okay, so that's how we do a trans translation. We're just moving it. Translations are fairly simple. Uh, for this one, again, this one's different because we actually have to draw in the original thing. Okay? The original figure isn't drawn in for us. We actually have to put the point, put it in the right place. We have to draw and label the original. So W is at negative 5, negative 5. G is at negative 4, negative 1. S is at negative 1, negative 4, and C is at negative 1, negative 5. Okay, and I'm going to cheat a little bit by drawing it using my nice straight lines because so there's our quadrilateral in this case that we're going to transform. And our transformation, we're given our rule is plus 6 plus 4. If this is a vector, it'd be 6, 4. That's how we'd represent that same transformation as a vector. Now, remember, when we use the pointy things, we're talking about the transformation, not the individual points that occur when we're done. Yeah? Do we have to write that on every level? No, you don't have to. I'm just showing you in case it showed up a different way or if it asked you. So you know what both representations look like. Um, and again, it's pretty simple. We're going to go up six and right four for every point, and you just do it one point at a time. So I'm going to start with W, 
up six would be here, and then right four, one, two, three, four. We're going to mark that point W primed. Now, if it says list the coordinates of the points, I can't, I don't have the full instructions here. I want you to list the coordinates of the points when you're done, as well as do that. We may want to note right away that W primed is at negative 1, 1. Okay. And we could also work this, um, some people like to work it the other way. They say, okay, negative 4 plus 6, I could list my points first and then mark them instead of just doing it all graphically. So I could do G primed is going to be at negative 4 plus 6 is 2, and negative 1 plus 4 is 3, and then plot that. So 2, uh, 3. That doesn't seem right. One. Sorry, one negative one. I did. I counted wrong, didn't I? Ooh. Undo. I could tell right away that that was not correct. So, let's fix that. I went. I went the wrong way, didn't I? I did. I did slope instead of uh, x y. I did, I didn't do plus six, plus four. That's better. I did slope. So w? w prime there is actually at one negative one, positive one negative one, sorry. Went the wrong way. G prime is at two, three. That makes more sense now. <laughs> if your shape doesn't look the same, you know you've made a mistake. So it's actually pretty simple to work with in a lot of ways. Uh, C prime is going to be over here at um, 5, negative 1, and S primed is going to be at 5, 0. And then we just go ahead and connect our dots. And again, it's a pretty easy check. Does my copy look like the original? When I put the W in the wrong place, immediately it's like, wait a minute, something's wrong here because it didn't look right. So that makes this transformation stuff pretty easy. You can, you should be able to recognize a mistake very quickly. Okay. Find the component form of the vector that translates p p at three two to p primed at negative one seven. So all this asks now. This is asking for the vector. It wants the component form of the vector. So this is asking for this, okay, for the pointy ones. And it's not very hard to do. If P is here, P is at 3, and P primed is negative 1, how much have we moved? Down 4, right? If the Y coordinate is at negative 2 for P and P primed is at 7, how much have we moved up? 9. That's all there is to it. It's really not complicated. Um, again, same thing, same point we start with, just a new ending point. Started at 3, wound up at 5, that's an increase of 2. And from negative 2 to negative 8 is a decrease of 5. Gosh, I hope not. <laughs> okay. So again, it's the component form of the vector. That's all they're asking for. Describe that transformation. The, uh, yeah, easy. Now we're going to do some reflections. Now reflections, again, one point at a time. Reflect them, then connect the dots when you're done. Uh, but remember, reflections mirror. That's where we're flipping over a mirror. It's not just sliding it. It's flipping it. You're reflecting it. And the first thing you have to do is make sure we identify where our mirror is. So it says y-axis. Well, fortunately for us, the y-axis is labeled. Yeah. If you must. Okay. So identify where your mirror is. And then reflect one point at a time. Again, pretty simple. 
N here is 1.1 1. 1, 1 unit away from the mirror, so 1 unit away on the other side, and we're going to label it N prime. J is 3, so we're going to go 3 here, so there's J prime. S is 2 units over, so there's S primed, and we got T primed. And then we just play connect the dots, so after all four points are translated, we play our connect the dots. And there we have a nice reflection. Okay. Again, can't emphasize enough. You need to label the points. If you have the correct picture drawn, but you don't have S prime, T prime, N prime, J primed, you don't have the points labeled properly, you're not going to be counted as a fully correct solution. Because, and I need to not just see the shape, but know that you know where each point is going in the transformation. Uh, reflecting across the line Y equals X. This is the one that's always a little bit tricky because the diagonal line. And so that diagonal is Y equals X. Y equals negative X is the opposite diagonal. And we reflect across a diagonal line. Remember, what we're doing is we're reflecting on the diagonal, on the I'm sorry, on the opposite diagonal. And so we're looking and saying, okay, how far is each point on the opposite diagonal from there, and then going that same distance either way? So I kind of drew in the reflections there to where things go. So. As I find my reflected points, C here goes to C primed because it's one diagonal opposite. G on the opposite diagonal goes one, two and a half diagonals to the mirror. So a half, one and a half, two and a half. There's my G primed. And my X is down below, so we're going to go up half a diagonal. There's X primed. And we just connect our dots. You do not have to draw in what I threw in for dashed lines there, those aren't necessary. You don't have to draw those. I'm just doing that to demonstrate how we're doing the reflection here, how we're finding where those points are. And it's a very visual thing. So your final solution is probably going to look more like, we'll delete those. Your final solution should look more like that. Okay. All right. Uh, reflect across the line x equals one, making sure again we know where this line is. Finding the mirror is the important thing. So in this case, x equals one. Notice where the x-axis is. X equals one is the vertical, whoops, thought I had that selected, but apparently not. The vertical line, it doesn't want to take that. If I put there, there we go. There's my x equals one right there. Okay. There's x equals one, and it's because x equals one, x equals one, not y equals one, x equals one, because that's what it says. And read this carefully, because i got a lot of people who see the X, and they just go, oh, X axis. That's not what it says. you got to read it carefully. And then we just reflect each point across that mirror. So Q go is 2 from the mirror, so 2 points. So two, over here, there's Q primed. T is 1, 2, 3, 4, so there's T primed. E is 3, E primed, and C primed. And we connect our dots. And if it asks you to list the coordinates as well, once you've done the reflection, you can always list the coordinates when you're done, right? Okay. Rotations. Now, rotations are where things are going to get a little interesting. Because this is, again, where you have to twist things. And it can get a little bit, a little bit confusing with rotation. Now, I promised you on the podcast, and I have, and I 
have to finish running them off, but I have these. I'm going to give you these little half sheets that give you the coordinate rules for rotations. They also give you the coordinate rules for reflection and stuff like that. So if you want the coordinate rules, I'm going to give you those because I promised you I would give you those. So some people like to use the coordinate rules. So I'm going to do this one visually, and then I'm going to do it using the coordinate rules. So I'm going to do it both ways. So it's kind of a few. 90 degrees counterclockwise rotation. All right. So literally what we're going to do is we're going to go 90 degrees counterclockwise. I'm going to note where things are. I'm going to turn my picture 90 degrees counterclockwise. Okay. And then I'm going to note that, hey, I notice that J primed, the new J location is at 5, negative 4. Okay. So J primed is at 5, negative 4. And D primed is at 3, negative 5. And the new T location is at 2, negative 3. So I've noted where those locations are going to be when it's turned 90 degrees. And now I'm going to turn that picture back to its original orientation. And I'm going to plot those points. So J primed was at 5, negative 4. D primed was at 3, negative 5. And T primed was at 2, negative 3. And there's my rotation. The other way to do this is if we do the coordinate rules. If I did it by coordinate rules, I wouldn't actually twist my paper. I would actually start by listing my original coordinates and say, okay, T is at negative 3, negative T. And J is at negative 4, negative 5. And D is at negative 5, negative 3. Okay? So I'd list, this is the other way of doing it. I'd list those original coordinates, and then notice that for a 90 degree rotation counterclockwise, the rule is AB goes to negative BA. So that means negative 3, negative 2 goes to the opposite of what B was, so positive 2 and negative 3. So that's going to be T primed. And J prime goes to the opposite of B, which would be positive 5 and negative 4. There's J primed. And D goes to the opposite of B, which is positive 3, and A, which is negative 5. And there's D prime, which is exactly what we had over here, just in a slightly different order. And then I'd plot these points instead of doing the physical rotation. So whether you choose to do that via the physical rotation, noting the points and then plotting them, or rotating, plotting a point, rotating back, rotating, plotting a point, rotating back, rotating, plotting a point, rotating back, whatever you want to, however you want to handle that. Um, or you want to use the rule, it's up to you. You get the same results. Some people prefer using the rules that way. Remember, negative B doesn't mean it's going to be a negative answer. It means the opposite sign of whatever the value was before. If it was negative, it becomes positive. If it's positive, it becomes negative. Positive A here means that it just maintains the sign. So A was negative 3, it remained negative 3. It has the same value as it had before. So if you use the coordinate rules, fine. If you do the actual physical rotation, fine, either way. All right, but that's what we should look like. Uh, rotation 180 around the origin. Um, I'm going to do this one just, uh, I'll do this one strictly using the rules. I'll do the third one using, um, or doing, yeah, this one I'll do using the rule. The other one I'll do physical rotation. So just so we have different examples. 
So my rule for 180 rotation is AB goes to negative A, negative B. So AB to negative A, negative B. So we're going to change the signs of both A and B, but not the order. So I'm going to need to list my original points. T is at 0, negative 2. M is at negative 1, negative 5. And Z is at negative 4, negative 5. Okay. Whoops. That wasn't what I wanted to move, but maybe. Stop. There we go. I'm going to just move this information over a little bit so I can actually graph. I shouldn't have put those points on top of the graph. There we go. Okay. So... Now we're going to do our transformations. So T primed we're going to keep we're going to change the values so negative a negative 0 is still 0, negative negative 2 is 2. And M primed is going to be at 1 5. And Z primed is going to be at 4 5. Okay. We maintain the order. We just change the signs. Yes. Fantastic. How would you even know that? I see. Well, but how do you, you can have to wait till we're done with our review. I can wait, obviously. Okay. So now we plot our points. T primes at zero two. M primed is at one five. And Z prime is at 4, 5. And we just connect our dots. And there's a rotation. Pretty straightforward. And again, you don't have to memorize the rules. I will give them to you if you choose to use the rules method. 0, 2. T prime is at 0, 2. Yeah, the original T was at 0, negative 2. This one I'll do physically on uh, 90 degrees counterclockwise. So I'm going to take my picture, turn it 90 degrees counterclockwise, the direction indicated. I slide it over so I got some space to write. I can't slide it over too far. I'll lose my thing. There we go. All right. So I've got. My new locations, x primed is at negative 5, 4. Z primed is at negative 4, 2. And M primed is at 0, 2. Okay. The biggest mistake people make is they don't count correctly the boxes. I can do that too, so I double check. Negative 5, 4, good. Negative 4, 2. Yep, 0, 2. All right, good. I double count to make sure I've got those locations right because it's super easy to miscount the boxes. Then I rotate back. And I plot those points. So negative 5, 4. There's x primed. Negative 4, 2. There's z primed. And 0, 2, there's M primed. Connect the dots. Rotation is done. And I can see it's a rotation. I mean, it's pretty easy to see. It's the same figure. We haven't changed anything, have we? I mean, all we're doing is moving the figures. The figures are always congruent when we're done. They're always exactly the same side lengths, exactly the same angles. They're congruent figures when we're all done, which is great. Okay, identify lines of symmetry for each drawing, if any. And this literally involves drawing in the lines of symmetry. So literally what you do is you take your pencil or your pen or whatever your crayon, I guess whatever you're using that day, um, and you draw in lines of symmetry. Where's the line of symmetry on the B? 
across the middle? Well, I know, but deal with it. You get the idea. Okay. Yeah, it's it was hand drawn. Deal with it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not perfect. Okay. How about our uh, Green Lantern symbol? Down the middle and across the middle. Okay. So I've got a symmetry line approximately there, and another one there, don't I? I could mirror it either way. Hmm. Okay. Any other symmetry in that one? Okay. Okay. Guys. Yeah. I got I I ran off ones with X. I told you yesterday that I didn't get the pictures on there, so all right, so this one, you don't, you're not going to redraw these symbols, so, but let's talk about them, okay? Rotational symmetry. We aren't going to draw rotational symmetry. We just identify how many degrees it has rotational symmetry. And rotational symmetry is simply found by finding the repetitions in the pattern, okay? How many times does this pattern repeat? Recycling symbol here. Three times, right? Okay, so about how many degrees before repetition? How many degrees would I have to rotate this to get exactly the same symbol? No, 90 degrees would be right there. That's not exactly the same, is it? How can I determine what that angle is? How much is one full rotation? 360. How many times does it repeat? Three times, right? So 360 divided by three, the number of repetitions. Yeah. So there we go. So that repeats every 120 degrees. This pretty picture here. Isn't that lovely? Okay. How many repetitions are there? Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, it repeats? 36 times. Well, not 36 times. 36 degrees. 30, every 36 degrees, yep. 360 divided by 10 is 36. Yep, that's it. 360 divided by the number of repetitions if it has rotational symmetry. Okay. There's some in the homework that did not have rotational symmetry. How do you know if that's rotational? If it if the pattern doesn't repeat or if the you know, if I had a shape like one of the ones in the homework was a shape like this. It didn't repeat. Okay. So that didn't repeat. So that pretty much takes it that's what the quiz is tomorrow, folks. That takes you the whole thing. Should be a pretty straightforward quiz, a nice chance to get a good score on the board here to start the second quarter. All right. It's not going to change your first quarter grade, but it's going to establish your second quarter grade. <laughs>